so for this second webinar, uh, we'll be with uh, Dr. Emmanuel Van Erck to analyze underperformance. Um, Emmanuel, can you please uh, um, go to the next slide, please? Yes, so uh, how is it going to happen? So I'm just uh, starting with a quick presentation of uh, Arioneo and Echimetre, then uh, I will pass it on to uh, Emmanuel and we will talk about uh, two cases about underperformance and then we'll uh, save uh, 15 minutes to um, uh, answer your question. Um, Emmanuel, can you please uh, next uh, go to the next slide? Uh, so, Emmanuel, um, let me introduce you. Uh, you are an equine veterinarian specializing in internal and sports medicine. And I am from RNO and I'm here at the head of operations. And so, um, just a quick word, Emmanuel, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, about the question. So, you can ask all of your questions in the chat, uh, but please. Uh, keep your microphone shut uh, during the presentation and we, you can also ask the, your question in the chat and we'll answer them uh, in the end. And be careful to write to everyone so that everybody can see what's been uh, asked before and we'll answer them in the end. Uh, so now I'm just going to start with a few words about Arioneo. Emmanuel, can you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so Arioneo was uh, founded in 2016 uh, well, we started our uh, R&D process, so we've been working two years on uh, Echimetre to start developing the electrodes who are patented and now uh, va scientifically validated for the ECG measure and the heart rate va variability measure too. Uh, we are today working with 130 and more trainers, horse owners, vets and researchers across the world. We are uh, present in 21 countries on five continents. Um, so now a few words about Echimetre. Uh, so we've developed this solution both for trainers uh, on the left and for veterinarian uh, on the right. So there are two different fixture system. The Echimetre vet system uh, is uh, fed for all kind of horses, sports horses as well. And the racing device here is specifically for uh, thoroughbreds. Um, so the, um, the Echimet system is designed to collect the cardio information as well as the ECG during every training. Uh, it also has an RFID reader so that the scenario of use is very quick and it sets up in like 30 seconds. And in the box, we have a GPS and also a movement sensor, which allows us to analyze all the locomotion parameters. So now I'll pass it on to Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Colleen, for the introduction and welcome to everyone because I can see that there are people from all over the world. So I'll say good morning to you because we're in Belgium here, but um, good evening if you're elsewhere on the other side of the globe. Uh, I wanted to share the uh, experience I have with um, connected items and um, We've been working with Arioneo uh, for a couple of years to develop some features that would help us as veterinarians to um, get uh, more information on how the horse functions during exercise. So we're all interested in this phenomenal athlete. When you dig into exercise physiology, how the horse works during an intense effort, it's amazing to see how they've adapted over uh, thousands of years or millions of years to achieve the level of speed and stamina that they've reached. Now, of course, it's really important to understand whether, what are the specifics of their physiology, of their heart system, their uh, lungs, their muscles, all of that, because we need to have them uh, at the peak of their performance uh, to uh, achieve successful careers. And that implies that the horses need to be well-trained and perfectly healthy. Now, as veterinarians, we're often um, called mostly because horses have problems. And this is a very distressing picture, I think, because it's a, a wonderful horse that has sustained um, an injury during race and had to be put down. Now, what we're trying to achieve 
is to prevent accidents like this happening. We don't want to see horses that are uh, extraordinarily uh, talented uh, go to waste because of an accident. And if accidents happen, maybe there are signs that appear during training that can put us on the track of something going on that could uh, affect the horse's capacity to perform or even uh, sustain his uh, life. So our job as vets is not just to come and treat uh, injuries that would occur, but it's also to try and prevent uh, problems from happening. Now, as much as I would love to be on the track every morning with the trainers watching these beautiful athletes um, train and warm up and, and canter, it's difficult for us to make time to be able to go and see the horses and discuss with the trainers. So we're often at the yard um, to, to review horses that have had problems or that are not 100%. But I think that um, now with the new technology, we have the possibility to have a link with the, the trainers that we did not have before. If we use connected items like uh, the Equimeter, for instance, we can gain insight on how the horse has um, supported his training if he compares to all the other horses of that yard or if he is actually showing signs of abnormal fatigue or abnormal locomotion or maybe a recovery that we wouldn't be quite as good as it should be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give you two examples, two cases that we've had um, in which we have some data from the Equimeter and show you how this data, which is actually very simple, can help us gain insight into what is going on with the horse. Um, these are examples that are taken in racehorses, but we could very well um, apply them to other sport horses, eventers, endurance horses, show jumpers, even dressage horses, which is uh, what we uh, do also here in Belgium. So the first case I wanted to share with you is a two-year-old colt who had some um, promising uh, results during uh, training and a really uh, interesting uh, success uh, for his first race. But then as time went on, he did not show the same progress as the other horses during training. And if I show you the data from um, some of his uh, parameters that were recorded during uh, training session, well, I don't know why this is playing all by itself, but you can see that the um, horse here, if you look at the speed, he's got equivalent speeds, equivalent best time over 600 meters in comparison to the other horses in the stable. So he is indicated in red, and the parameters from the other horses, same age, uh, same gender from the same yard are in gray. When you look at uh, the recoveries uh, or the heart rate parameters, you can see that this horse is not recovering as well as the other horses. So his heart rates remain abnormally high even after uh, 15 minutes of recovery. And his heart rates, um, his maximal heart rates would not be affected. So now if we take one of his training sessions where the trainer felt that the horse was not doing quite as well as he should, you can see here on the top graph the speed of the horse and on the bottom in red the heart rate. Now if I superimpose these two um, graphs, you can see that here in blue the the speed decreases, but despite the fact that the horse has slowed down, the heart rate remains almost as high as maximal heart rate over a longer period of time. So here we're in kilometers, but he takes over 15 minutes to re start reducing his heart rate. Now this discrepancy between um, slowing down in speed and slowing down in heart rate is caused by a deficit in oxygen. So this horse has a massive deficit in his 
oxygen and he has to maintain his heart rate very high in order to compensate for that. That's a typical finding uh, in horses that suffer from loss of oxygen. So we need to be able to look into um, the oxygen transport chain. Is this a problem with the horse's breathing, lungs, the upper airways? Is it a problem with the heart? Because the heart distributes uh, the blood, of course. Or is it a problem with anemia? This horse does not have enough red blood cells and has low oxygen because of that. So there are different ways to, to look at this. And if I um, continue looking at the data that I've gained with the equimeter, I'm interested in seeing how this horse behaves over time. So we look at his different trainings. He has similar maximal heart rates during his uh, trainings during the breezes. But when we look at, at the bottom here, the heart rate recovery after 15 minutes, we can see that the more we go along from week to week, the higher it takes, the longer it takes for this horse to recover. So clearly there is something that is going on and that is worsening over time. Now with the equimeter, one of the uh, features which we haven't found in other connected items is the possibility to have an ECG together with all the other measurements. So here, seeing that this horse has abnormal recoveries, abnormal behavior of his heart rate during a training or various trainings, we look at the ECG and during the uh, recordings, we can see that this horse has abnormal rhythm. So he has premature beats that occur even at um, the very high heart rates that he achieves during training. That is absolutely abnormal if these uh, arrhythmias occur consistently and repeatedly over time uh, during the exercise phase. These are what we called supraventricular premature contractions or SVPCs. And they are a sign that different things could be happening. So as a vet, once we have that uh, sign, SVPC, we think of different things that could uh, produce them in the horse during exercise. So it could be a sign of infection if the horse has a viral infection or a bacterial infection uh, that can uh, reload some uh, chemicals in the horse's body that will trigger uh, abnormal cardiac rhythm. We could have also upper or lower airway disease. We could have problems with uh, musculoskeletal issues, or we could have a primary cardiac problem. So it's our job as vets, seeing what is happening during training to try and find out what is underlying. And in this horse, after exercise, when you auscultate him, he has a very mild um, murmur at the level of the mitral valve. We did an echocardiography on this horse. This is my colleague, Dr. Terwart, doing an echo in a horse. And we realized that this horse has significant uh, leak in the mitral valve, which is one of the most important valves in the horse's heart that produces very high pressures in the area of the atria, which is this cavity uh, that you see here on the heart, and that generates supraventricular premature contractions, premature beats because the horse uh, has the heart that is under abnormal pressure. Now, unfortunately for the horse, this is not very good news because this means that uh, this is not going to get better with time. We do not do any interventions on the valves in the horse. But what this allows us to know is that it is not a good idea to continue uh, increasing the level of training in this horse because he is not going to progress. He's not going to get better and better. He is not ultimately going to perform in a race. So with the insight that I gain from looking at his parameters, his data during training, I know that I have to retire this horse or um, send him over to another type of sport, which is less demanding because he is not going to make it as a successful horse. So that's it for the um, first K2 
case. Don't hesitate to ask questions on this case if you want to in the chat and then I will answer them afterwards. Um, I wanted to go on to a second case, which is a little bit different, which is the case of this uh, three-year-old uh, filly. So she had had some uh, promising performances um, during her season as a two-year-old, and then she had a tendon injury and she was rested uh, for the rest of the season. And then the trainer decided to train her again at three-year-olds. So she had a very uh, promising return to training, but after a uh, low level canter, she bled when she came back to uh, the yard. Now this is the type of work that she did. Um, here you have the, the speeds in blue on the right and the heart rates again. And you can see that um, the level of speed is fairly low. So we're uh, between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour, which is a slow canter for this horse or a moderate canter. And you can see that the heart rates follow the same curve as the speed. So this horse has a decrease uh, which corresponds. So there's not a problem with recovery. So they wanted to test her uh, a couple of days later on a higher speed training to see if she was really breathing abnormally or if she had any other signs of, of problems. So this is her Two days later, the training with the speed that goes much, much higher. We're averaging 60 kilometers an hour here at the peak. And of course, the heart rates uh, are much higher as well. So I'm interested in knowing if this mare compares with the other horses of uh, the same yard. And so we've superimposed the data of that mare with the data of the other mares over the same type of exercise. And the Horses from the yard are in blue and she is the curve in red. And you can see that the speeds are equivalent. You can see that her maximal heart rates are slightly above, but she has a very similar recovery uh, after work. So what, what is going on in this mare? Well, if we then again, uh, look a little bit deeper at her data, this is, also her heart rate data, we can see that there is about a 10% uh, difference in the levels of heart rates and recovery that she achieves. So that's not major, but maybe it's enough for us to put us on the lead of something going on at the level of the heart. So we're gonna have a look at the ECG again, because we have the possibility to do that. And very surprisingly, we can see that this mare has very frequent abnormal uh, premature beats throughout the exercise. During uh, warm up, during the maximal phase, and also during recovery, she shows once again SVPCs, so supraventricular premature contractions, uh, which is similar to the other mare, the cold that we saw before. So, there again, we go through a series of uh, differentials. Is this an infection? Is this a primary cardiac problem? Is it a muscle problem? Could it be something else like overtraining or fatigue? So of course, we do some blood samples to test for uh, the presence of infection, the consequences at the level of the heart. We're going to measure parameters like CK muscle enzymes and troponin. But because this mare has bled, we're interested also in looking at um, her lower airways. I'll mention that just afterwards. This is just uh, to show you um, over time the parameters of her training. So we have a longitudinal follow-up of her data and the areas that are circled in red are the moments where she, the moment where she bled for the first time. So she was at a very uh, low level of exercise. And then she had comparatively to that uh, period, normal um, behavior. So she, she continued to have breezes thereafter that were not necessarily uh, abnormal. So we investigated further and took some uh, blood samples. And this is what you do when you have a horse that is suspected of having 
uh, bleeding from the lungs, or EIPH, which stands for Exercise Induced Pulmonary Hemorrhage. These are the, um, the collected uh, syringes that we had. So we put some uh, saline inside the lungs and we collected, and we look at the cells that are contained in there. Now, this is not a uh, um, microscopy of her samples. It's another horse, but it's just to show you that there is evidence in these horses of several episodes of bleeding. So it's not just the only time that you saw the blood arriving at the level of the nostrils. This mare has had repeated episodes of bleeding and I can see it by doing this bronchoalveolar lavage BAL sample. In this particular mare, there was only the bleeding. There was no associated inflammation. So I therefore conclude that she does not have any primary lung problem. We took that away. We're interested in knowing if she has, for instance, a cardiac problem. We saw that SVPZs could be associated with a primary cardiac problem. The cardiac examination that included the ECG, of course, but also uh, the echocardiography did not show any abnormality. This is a, a mare with an absolutely normal heart. So I've got cardiac arrhythmia without any underlying cardiac problem, without any primary respiratory problem. What could this be? If you remember um, the history of the mare, she had sustained a tendon injury. And here, when we use anti-inflammatory um, compounds just before uh, training and after a period of rest, she shows less frequent SVPCs. And then as we intensify the training without any uh, pre-medication, she starts having them more often again. So this is a mare that is still painful from the injury that she had previously. I haven't showed you the locomotion parameters, but she has a difference in the symmetry of her trot as well. So that is another indication that I have to look at the locomotor system. The uh, treating vet did an ultrasound of her previous injuries and saw that she was uh, not yet ready to go uh, racing again, despite the fact that she had satisfactory response, physiological response during training. So I think that this is a very interesting application of connected systems because this helps us to see how the horse responds to the exercise that we ask him to do. And here, this is not a mare that we're going to return to training just now. We're going to monitor the way that her ECG behaves, the way that her injury heals before we decide to uh, race her again. Had we raced this uh, three-year-old mare um, just at the time we did the training session, well, she probably would have uh, had a permanent a rupture of her tendon, and that would be the end of her um, career. So it's a very interesting tool to prevent issues from happening. So to conclude, I think that uh, we can use systems such as the equimeter to improve the communication between uh, the trainer and the veterinarian. It is a tool for me to do telemedicine, I can see the type of work that the horse has done, how he has uh, tolerated that uh, work, if he showed any abnormal problems during that um, training session. It's an additional information to what the trainer is going to tell me. And it is something that I can do remotely. So I can, I can see if this is um, a problem that requires urgent, um, consultation or if it's something that can be monitored over time progressively without having me to, to go there and check the horse. I think that if we open up a little bit our perspective, it's um, something that is going to help us understand the strengths and weaknesses of each individual horse, compare him to all the other horses of the same stable. We've had um, Horses where we thought that um, they were progressing normally and saw that actually the type of work that we were asking them was 
lower than what they could tolerate. So we've improved the quality of training in some horses. Um, I'm talking here more, mostly about eventers where uh, we could increase the level of work and uh, the level of performance. It's a very useful tool to prevent injuries, to follow up rehabilitation uh, in horses that have sustained injuries and decide when it is safe to return to racing. It's also a way to see if young horses are fit to compete, have they reached a level of training that is enough for them to, to be able to return to, to enter competition. It's interesting to detect abnormal profiles and see if it is something that we can treat as veterinarians. But I think it's also uh, at a broader scale, something that can really help us improve the health and welfare of racehorses, but also any type of sport horses. The more we generate data, the more we're going to have insight and sensitive insight on how the horses respond to exercise and training. And that's going to improve communication, not only between ourselves, but also with um, you know, promoting a, a sport that is dedicated to the health and well-being of horses. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Uh, so please ask your question in the chat. We'll answer, Lee. We will answer them. So we have uh, 10 more minutes uh, for the questions. And anyway, I will send you the recording of the session. And uh, you can ask every question you want uh, to the following addresses, contact at ironeo.com, Valentin at ironeo.com. Valentin is our CEO. You also have uh, my address, Colin at ironeo.com. And uh, of course, you can ask questions to uh, Dr. Emmanuel Van Aert, uh, to Van Aert at esmp.be. And find all the information about Echimet and Echimet Vet to um, uh, our website, ironeo.com. Uh, so we have a first question um, to know if it's possible to anticipate or detect the warning signs of a sudden death uh, phenomena. Um, and maybe Emmanuel, you want to answer that? Well, certainly, um, if I could, uh, I, if I could decide or see when the horse dies, that would certainly be a great advantage. But um, I think that what the um, connected systems allow us to do is to detect abnormal patterns. So here, for instance, uh, arrhythmias. Arrhythmias can, can be one of the causes of sudden death. If the horse goes into severe arrhythmia like ventricular tachycardia, uh, he will die uh, on the racetrack in front of everyone if it happens. So I haven't had any cases yet, but I think that if we, um, we've had horses with atrial fibrillation, the, um, the, the trainer felt that the horse was completely off and we certainly um, were very quick to pick up that very pathogenic type of arrhythmia. So that allowed us to take the horse out of training and treat him for this arrhythmia. There again, if that horse had gone into uh, racing with that type of pathology, he certainly uh, either best case scenario would have had a poor performance, worst case scenario would have, would have died. So I think that that is a very valuable insight that we have now the possibility to do during training. But I'd be interested in, in of course, collecting more data in horses all over the world. Thank you. Uh, so now we have another question from Christopher. Um, so does the GPS offer information regarding the profile of the terrain worked over, i.e. hill work or work on the flat, as well as speed and HR? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so we offer information about tilt. Uh, so maybe I can share my screen for a few seconds. Uh, I'm not allowed to share my screen, so maybe the host. Um, I will stop sharing mine so that you can share yours. Uh, Okay, thanks. So, so yeah, can you all see my screen? Yes. 
Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so the training here is what the training with Ekimet looks like. So about uh, the, the question I've been asked, uh, here you can see uh, all the recording of uh, the training. So we have uh, the split times and in the split times you have the average tilt um, that is shown as well as the average HR on the interval and uh, the speed uh, and all the GPS um, the GPS as well as locomotion parameters here, the stride length and stride frequency. Uh, what is the quickest way to synchronize the trainings with the app? Uh, so for uh, so the Akimet system uh, is recording all the the training uh, alone, so you don't have to have um, a Wi-Fi or um, a data connection to record your training but in the end or at the end of the day you can download the data with bluetooth with the app um, and so you just have to be close enough to the device to uh, start uploading the data and have of course a, a data connection uh, or wi-fi connection to upload the data to the cloud and find it back to your um, platform your web platform or um, access it from your phone on or, or a tablet from the app um, what are the parameters that need to be re uh, monitored on a daily basis to prevent underperformance? Uh, so I guess this is more a question for a, a vet. So Emmanuel, maybe you want to answer that? Well, I think it's um, we're going to gain experience on what we need to look at. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because I, I'm from I'm an internist, internal medicine specialist. So I look more at the heart rate and heart rate over speed and the ECG, of course. But um, that's the great thing about Arioneo is that they have a, a, a team of uh, engineers that will uh, look at the bigger data and come up with indexes to tell you if the horse is abnormal in comparison to the other horses, abnormal in comparison to himself over time. So these are simple indexes uh, that uh, help you to focus on what is important and what other things you need to look at. Of course, if I had to look at the ECGs each and every time, that would be fairly tedious. But if I look at um, those indexes, and I don't know, Colleen, if you can show uh, that screenshot of the dashboard where you've got those indexes, you've got a scale of uh, red, uh, of green to red, and yeah. On that scale, you can see if the horse is within the normal uh, range in comparison to horses of the same level or if the horse is uh, abnormal. So here are the trainings, for instance, you can see if um, over time the horse compares to himself or to the other horses. As soon as the horse is off, uh, you know that something is, is going on. So what I find, uh, what I like about the system is also that it's very simple and easy to use. Uh, it's a no nonsense system. You scan a chip and you have the horse recorded. So that means that uh, there is no time spent uh, on a computer entering the name of the horse, entering um, how the weather was that day. Everything is automatized. So that helps you gain some very precious time and facilitates the recordings. The more we have recordings, the more we have interesting information. Um, so we have another question about heart rate variability and what can I do with it? So heart rate variability, uh, we have good experience with human athletes, uh, not so much with horses yet. It's something that is used to monitor uh, equine well-being, uh, but all the recordings have been made in horses at rest. We're now looking at doing these recordings in horses, um, the race horses, we equip them prior to uh, exercising them and see if that heart rate variability is a pertinent um, measurement. Uh, but we don't have the answer yet. Uh, we've gone through the first step of validating heart rate variability with the system. So we've published a, a paper 
um, a couple of months ago showing that uh, the equimeter reliably uh, allowed monitoring of uh, heart rate variability. Thank you. Um, could the GPS info and speed and tilt uh, be presented in a graphic format as well? Example, analyzing comparative performance on a cross-country course. Uh, so I'll share my screen again. And so, yes, for example, if I take um, this, so we have the speed in a graphic format, but uh, as for now, uh, the tilt is not presented uh, graphically only here, uh, but you can, you can also um, set the length of the interval so that you can be more fine uh, in the average tilt um, evolution analysis in regard uh, of, the, um, of the pace and, uh, uh, and yeah, the distances in the pace. Um, but yes, as, as of now, it's not yet possible to have it uh, in a graph, but we can definitely keep it up for, um, up, for upcoming developments of uh, Equimet. So I think that's all for the question, unless uh, someone has another one. But uh, we'll thank you very much uh, for the for attending this webinar, and it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, I will send you the recording. I will send it to everyone uh, who uh, registered but could not be present here. Ah, we have a last question. I think we have two minutes left. Are there reference values for sport hosts added to the system due to the fact that there are often not so many hosts on the same level in one barn? Um, so. In the equipment um, system, you have uh, the, possible, the possibility to add as many nodes and uh, to qualify the trainings you, you are doing. So you can definitely add um, uh, specifically um, specific training or indication to, uh, to follow your sport courses de depending on what they are doing exactly in their level. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any, any question you could have uh, by email. So please uh, contact me with, uh, no, no, with no problem. Thank you very much, all. We're thanks. Ready. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day, evening, whatever you have today. Stay safe. Yes, thanks. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, Emmanuel. Bye. Thank you very much.